Hello BookTube. I've mentioned in these early videos for the new year that I am easing my way back into BookTube by doing staples, recognizable stuff that I've done a thousand times before. This video isn't like that. I usually don't do tech unboxings on this channel, but I'm going to do that today. I figure an unopened box is too good an opportunity to waste. And I'm a little embarrassed by the, by the tech this time around because it was done on the spur of the moment. It was done quickly and without any thought. It was done as an emotional reaction to a catastrophe that befell me tech-wise at the end of 2022. <laughs> and I figured, why should poor Micah Cummins be the only one who's hearing these, <laughs> these tales of woe? They're prematurely aging him. <laughs> in front of our eyes. Surely he would be, he would appreciate it if some of the rest of you would hear this story as well. So I'll go over a thumbnail version of it. In the, at the end of 2022, I was sure what I wanted my tech set up to be for 2023. Absolutely sure what it was. And basically, I mean, there were machines that were involved, but it basically boiled down to an idea not machines. And the idea was that since I was an Apple fanboy, and have been for a long, long time, is how I learned to use personal computing, I would embrace that. And I would have a MacBook here in Little Book Room, a MacBook at the fainting couch, an iPad here in Little Book Room, and an iPad at the fainting couch. So that I'm not needing to remember what's where so that I can just, I have tech with right where I need it in the two places where I ever need it. And then at the end of 2022, I suffered a Mac apocalypse. No idea what caused it. These things were not interconnected, so they can't have been communicating one thing to another. But the iPads came through okay, and my iPhone came through okay, but the MacBooks, one by one, failed. One had a black screen, and it still has not come back. I've had black, I've had black screen MacBooks before where they did come back, or where a little bit of fiddling around with the casing at the bottom of the, of the base of the machine, which is where the wires connect, a little bit of fiddling around might reconnect those wires and bring it back to life. It's very seldom that a, a MacBook that just goes immediately to a black screen is lost to you. But in the short term, it certainly is. And one of them was that. Another one blew out its speakers. Uh, I think I had probably noticed that happening gradually in the course of 2022. But in, in, in the same moment, basically, the same day, the speakers blew out completely so that it sounded like it was impossible even to listen to a video, much less think about making one with that machine. And so on and so on, right down the line. Th those were the two frontline MacBooks. Once they were both sidelined, then I had to go to the backup MacBooks, one of which has eroded keys. So I'm wondering, the, has eroded keys and also a weak hinge, so the, the screen doesn't really stay upright. It's still functional, but I, the one I was, I got it out and I powered it up and I was working on it. And I noticed that it, it's slow and it's blurry and the eroded keys are really eroded. You're looking at, it's not just that the letter has worn away from the key. It's that the plastic covering of the key has worn away to the point where a, a year of typing on it, as a, which is what I was predicting, would totally break those keys. Now, I've heard all kinds of remedies. I have, I've tried all kinds of remedies. I tried a plastic keyboard cover, but it made the typing experience impossible. I tried ordering replacement keys, but uh, somehow or other, even though this was the only MacBook that, that uh, the only MacBook Air that, that Apple made in its year, somehow or other, that was not identifying detail enough to make sure that I got the right Apple keys. I even tried... Uh, nail polish, <laughs> applying nail polish, acrylic cement, whatnot, just to those two keys and letting it dry and hoping that that would reinforce them. But I battered the crap out of that stuff. The minute it dried, it became brittle and could be cracked and flaked off. And the other backup MacBook started having problems with what email, with what uh, websites it would go to and not go to. Hadn't had that problem before. But it suddenly started telling me I needed security certificates 
for ordinary websites. Then I went to the next round of backup MacBooks, and one of those didn't work at all, and the other one that I had used in 2022 quite a bit suddenly was asking me for an admin password. I got it secondhand, thirdhand on eBay. I have no idea what the admin password is. I could never guess it. I never needed it before. I briefly tried looking around. I briefly tried to get in contact with the, the original seller, the person who sold that to me, presuming that they would have it. But they didn't answer any emails. They're probably long gone, close, closed up shop, and the chances are that they wouldn't know the admin password anyway. Another cautionary tale about buying things on eBay. In fact, when I was done, when the dust settled on my Macpocalypse, only two MacBooks still worked. One was my workhorse MacBook, a MacBook Air from about seven years ago, that works just fine. It does everything. doesn't have any finickiness to it at all. I made most of my videos in 2022 on it, but the reason, you might think, oh, well, what's the problem? And the reason is, the problem is that I don't want to have just one machine. That's the whole point. That's the whole, that was the whole reason why I got so many duplicate machines, so much redundancy, so that I wouldn't have just one machine that actually worked, <laughs> so that if anything happened to that machine, as it's likely to do, I'm pretty rough on my stuff, I'd be out of luck. There was that. That MacBook Air worked. And also, uh, Greg at another Bibliophile Reads very nicely sent me an old MacBook from 2007 or 2008, something like that. Big, heavy thing. 14 inch keyboard I think it has perfectly works perfectly fine it is in itself a demonstration of the miracle of of Apple technology works perfectly fine and would work it wouldn't work as a laptop I would, I would need to put it on a desk or a stool and just leave it there and it's a stationary device that was what it was made for uh, it would work for everything that I need a MacBook to do but not everything that I want a MacBook to do you couldn't film on it I don't know that it even has a camera, but uh, it is a workhorse, and it still worked. And so did that the newer MacBook Air that I did get on eBay. The seller was very conscientious. You could tell right away that it was a, a one and only sale of theirs, and that they were very personal about, about it. They had fond memories of their machine. They had just upgraded, so they didn't need it anymore. They almost, they almost wanted to ask me if I would take good care of it. Of course, I... I'm giving it exactly the kind of workout that machines I assume like, <laughs> but I didn't want to be limited to just those two. And I confess, after 26, 27 hours of having one MacBook fail after another, in addition to not wanting to be reduced to just one machine that really works, I was also pretty irritated. I was pretty torqued off. <laughs> and out of irritation and a sense of flailing, I turned to my Chromebooks. I'm sure that all of you know what a Chromebook is, right? They are, they are um, well, actually, some of my viewers are quite on, quite on the, the decrepit side, as you may not know what a Chromebook is. They're a very simple laptop that is designed basically as a portal to the Google operating system, to Google OS. And Google set this up so that they can store your photos, they can make your documents, they have a document suite of their own. They can do your email, of course. They can give you uh, an operating system, a doorway to the rest of the internet. And that's all that a Chromebook is. Now, you can get uh, high-spec Chromebooks. I've never understood that, but you can do it. You can get Chromebooks that are a thousand dollars, even though they don't have the kind of manipulable desktop that you would be familiar with from a, with a Mac OS, and even though they don't have anything like the power of a MacBook, even a MacBook Air, even though that's true, you could still get one for $1,000. And they are in every price range in between that and the bottom of the rung. And out of peak, <laughs> out of peak, out of frustration, I decided on the spur of the moment to order a $30 Chromebook even though I already have Chromebooks, but a lot of my Chromebooks are fairly old. They'll still work. They'll still, the thing about a Chromebook is that you don't have to worry about what kind of mood it's in that day. It's going to work no matter what. It doesn't have anything to do except can connect you to Google, which is not antiquated. <laughs> Google is, is up and running as a, as a business. Elon Musk hasn't bought them yet. Uh, they ought to buy Twitter. <laughs> but, but, the reason that it was impulsive, the reason why I'm a little bit ashamed of it, not much, but a little bit, 
embarrassed by this this purchase is that it was spur of the moment. It was done out of peak. And so I wasn't thinking about what I want. What I want in a Chromebook, in addition to the, the minimal performance capability that they have, and that, that are all I need, all I need from a computer, is, an, is access to the internet and word processing. I don't need a fancy video editing software capability. I don't need gaming. I don't need anything like that. I don't have to connect these to a NASDAQ machine or anything. They're just word processing and looking at the internet and talking to the internet. But it'd be nice to film on a Chromebook as well, and they're notoriously bad for that. They 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 have cameras, onboard cameras, that are basically only good for the bare minimum, and otherwise, no. But not all of them. And the newer ones have paid attention to fixing that. I went digging through my Chromebooks. I found one, this thing. This is a Dell. Uh, that's made for the classroom, so it has it has rubber everywhere. There's rubber on all of the borders. There's even, as I mentioned to Micah, there's even rubber around the charging port. <laughs> this is just this is this is just designed to have the crap beaten out of it by students. And something that I I only noticed, <laughs> I, I noticed it very late. I've had this thing for months. I I got it because it was cheap. I think it was seventy dollars, a hundred dollars, something like that. And I used it for a little while, and I put it away because I was using a MacBook at the time, and the MacBook could film videos. And this thing, I didn't know, I didn't even try it. I just put it away, and so I, I wasn't aware that this is a touchscreen. Uh, this, this thing is also a touchscreen, in addition to everything else. And it's got, you know, the basic Chromebook connectivity. You've got a, a, a full-size memory card that you can put in there, and whole bunches of locks there, whole bunches of stuff on either side uh and the reason that i like this dell thing i've been using it quite a bit lately is that it's indestructible it's you can it's it's rubber on all of its borders it's meant to have the crap beaten out of it. i don't know if you were able to see but the hinges on this thing are incredibly strong they're on either side they're big ball hinges also has speakers up on the top instead of right here and right here firing down into your lap the way a lot of chromebooks do uh so I, I, I took it out of the pile of Chromebooks that I have. It's newer. And I've been using it and loving it. And that made me feel even more embarrassed because the whole time I was using it and loving it, my purchase was on the way. <laughs> I thought we'd do an unboxing. Uh, here's, the, here's the box here. I, I got a $30 Chromebook online. And let's, let's take a look at it. Let's see what I got. It's uh, an 11-inch. Chromebook E100. What have we got here? So, a bag of, of power cord. That's a lot of power cord. For... Oh, wow. Oh, goodness gracious. Okay, well, it's got a very long power cord. That's fantastic. It's got a... Uh, this is a USB-C. And it's long. <laughs> it could stretch anywhere. Great, okay. And then we've got the uh, the Chromebook itself. This thing was uh, refurbished, so it, it won't have any uh, operating machine or manual in it or anything like that. Okay, there we go. So this is another Lenovo. I went with Lenovo because I really like the mechanics of their keys. I really like them. This is another 11 inch. I went with that as well because an 11 inch is the size of the manual typewriter that I learned to type on. The area of the keyboard. It's the most natural for me. And then here's the device. Now, Chromebooks are pretty cheap. So one of the little standard industry things is it two finger. Can you, can you lift it with just two fingers without gripping it with your other hand? won't really work here you can't really do that this does not have the uh the rubber detailing that my other that my other uh that my dell does this lenovo does not you've got the lenovo logo engraved in the cover this is not a two finger open but you know one of the reasons why i don't care if it's a two finger open is because the whole idea of a two finger open being something that tech channels should look for the tech bros should assess was created by apple <laughs> 
<laughs> it was created by they made their own standard of whether or not that you should judge a, book, a, a a laptop, and they made that standard something that they had made their machine to do. Uh, I'm not quite so wall e sack of flesh lazy that I need my machine to open with two fingers. Uh, so there is the machine, ordinary Lenovo keyboard. This one has uh, slightly less robust hinges, and sure enough, it has speakers on the bottom facing down. <laughs> it's very strange. I guess the uh, the rationale is that these things, they have runners on the bottom. I guess the rationale is that the, the that won't hurt the speaker too much because it's assumed that it'll be on a flat desk. This is never going to be on a flat desk. But you've got uh, a speaker jack there and more connectivity. Uh, yeah, this, so this is this does not have a full micro SD card or SD card reader, but it has a Kensington lock. Why anybody? Why would anybody want to steal a thirty dollars Chromebook? Uh, I wonder what kind of uh, storage this has. Extra storage. I guess you could put a thumb drive in this. It's got a couple of thumb drive ports, one on each side. I guess you could, but this I think this thing has 16 gigs of onboard storage. That's more than I than I need. Absolutely more than I need. And um, this is probably dead. It probably has no power. So I will I will charge it up and see how it does. I don't remember off the top of my head the Chromebook E100. Uh, are you going to tell me maybe when this was made? Uh, well, according to this thing, the manufacturing date was, uh, 2002. <laughs> so the camera might not be any good on this thing. Probably isn't any good. But I have other devices. I have an iPad and an iPhone to film on. The main question I'm going to have for this thing is, what's it like to type on? My experience with Lenovo typing has been very good. So, so that, that's my guilty confession, <laughs> is that I got, I got, uh, another 11-inch Chromebook. That I, that I absolutely do not need. Uh, but do don't I need it? <laughs> well, there's no such thing as a cascade failure for Chromebooks. The way they want, the way, the thing that happened to me for my MacBooks will not happen with Chromebooks. But now I have at least a little redundancy <laughs> that I don't need. But the next step, I don't count $30 towards a tech budget at all. But the next step for the tech budget is to look around for a Chromebook that has a good camera, uh, a camera that will that will make a, a good looking video, good enough looking video. Uh, I'm going to try both of these. I'll do test videos. I'm going to use you as my guinea pig, and I'll try both of them and see what kind of a job they do. Not so much today or probably tomorrow. Boston has been socked with rain for days, and it's just killing the available light. Uh, but after that, in bright sunlight, I wonder what kind of a job either one of these things will do. We'll find out together. <laughs> so anyway, there's a tech box, a tech unboxing to start your year. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> but I'll be back. Thank you, BookTube.